STS-104 was a Space Shuttle mission to the International Space Station ISS flown by Space Shuttle Atlantis. Its primary objectives were to install the Quest Joint Airlock and help perform maintenance on the International Space Station. It was successful and returned to Earth without incident, after a successful docking, equipment installation and three spacewalks. Crew. Topic: Mission highlights. The primary purpose of the flight was to deliver and install the Quest airlock. The joint airlock is a pressurized flight element consisting of two cylindrical chambers attached end to end by a connecting bulkhead and hatch. Once installed and activated, the ISS airlock became the primary path for International Space Station space walk entry and departure for U.S. spacesuits, which are known as extravehicular mobility units, or EMUs. In addition, the joint airlock is designed to support the Russian Orlan spacesuit for EVA activity. The joint airlock is 20 feet meters long, 13 feet meters in diameter and weighs 6.5 short tons, 5.9 metric tons. It was built at the Marshall Space Flight Center (MSFC) by the Space Station Prime contractor Boeing. The ISS airlock has two main components, a crew airlock and an equipment airlock for storing EVA gear and EVA preflight preps. STS-104 also carries a Space Lab pallet with four high-pressure gas assembly containers that were attached to the exterior of the airlock. Mission specialists Michael Gernhardt and James Riley conducted three space walks while Space Shuttle Atlantis was docked to the International Space Station. They spent a total of 16 hours and 30 minutes outside. During the first space walk, Gernhardt and Riley assisted in the installation of the airlock. During the second and third excursions, they focused on the external outfitting of the Quest airlock with four high-pressure gas tanks, handrails and other vital equipment. The third spacewalk was conducted from Quest itself. STS-104 was the final space shuttle mission to have a five-member crew. All succeeding missions would have six or seven, except the final mission STS-135, which had four. Topic: First flight of Block II SSME. STS-104 was the first shuttle mission to fly with a Block II SSME. Post-launch analysis indicated an anomaly occurred when the engine was shut down. The cause was determined, and the mitigation approach was demonstrated on the STS-108 flight in November 2001. Topic: Space walks. Gernhardt and Riley, Eva One. EVA-1 start, 15 July 2001 to 3.10 Coordinated Universal Time EVA-1 end, 15 July 2001 to 9.09 Coordinated Universal Time Duration, 5 hours, 59 minutes Gernhardt and Riley, EVA-2 EVA-2 start, 18 July 2001 to 3.04 Coordinated Universal Time EVA 2 end, the 18th of July 2001 to 9:33 Coordinated Universal Time. Duration: 6 hours 29 minutes. Gernhardt and Riley, EVA 3. EVA 3 start, the 21st of July 2001 to 4:35 Coordinated Universal Time. EVA 3 end, the 21st of July 2001 to 8:37 Coordinated Universal Time. Duration: 4 hours 02 minutes. Topic: <inaudible> Wake-up calls. NASA began a tradition of playing music to astronauts during the Gemini program, which was first used to wake up a flight crew during Apollo 15. Each track is specially chosen, often by the families, and usually has a special meaning to an individual member of the crew, or is applicable to their daily activities. See also 
List of human spaceflights List of International Space Station spacewalks List of Space Shuttle missions List of spacewalks and moonwalks 1965–1999 Outline of space science <laughs>